Hello and welcome to Raj Sabha TV. You're watching Questionnaire, a unique show where we get you all the questions asked by the members in the upper house and replies given by the ministries and departments. I'm your host, Rajat Kane, joined with my colleague, Kriti Mishra. Thank you so much, Rajat. And these questions were asked by the members of the upper house in the previous session of parliament, which was the monsoon session of parliament. Or the show focuses on the important unstart questions asked by the members of the upper house. So these questions typically will be from the upper house and from the 252nd session of the Rajya Sabha. Well, broadly speaking, there are three categories of questions. Start, unstart and the short notice ones. And start are the ones where replies are given directly by the minister concerned on the floor of the house. And unstart questions are those questions of which written answers are given by the respective uh, departments and the government. But how do these questions find the way to parliament? What is the procedure? Let's find out in this report. A member submits his or her questions at least 15 days before the office of Rajya Sabha chairman. The Rajya Sabha Secretariat chooses the questions to be answered through a draw of ballots. Separate ballots are held for start and unstart questions. The questions are scrutinized for admissibility under the current rules and precedents. Advanced copies of chosen questions are sent to ministry or departments concerned. The Ministry Concerns collect information to prepare the reply. The Minister Concerned reply to start questions on the floor of the House and provides written answers to unstart questions. Up to 160 unstart questions are listed every day in a separate list. Well, there you saw how these questions are asked by the parliamentarians and replies given by the ministry. Now it's time to begin the show, Kriti. So the first question in this edition of the Question Now show is from member Dr. Sasman Patra. And this question is to the Prime Minister's office. And the member has inquired about India's space application programs and the present status of these programs. Well, that's right, Kriti. It's an extremely important question and in an elaborate or to say voluminous reply given by the Department of Space, the Ministry says that space application programs in India encompasses observation, communication and navigation. Well, the first point of the answer is Earth observation applications. Now, under the Earth observation applications are being carried out in the areas of land, water and ocean resources weather and climate, environment and ecosystem, urban and rural development, disaster risk reduction and governance. Some applications which have been operationalized and carried out by stakeholder departments with handholding from ISTRO include potential fishing zone forecast and ocean state forecast by Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services that comes under Department of Earth Sciences. Crop acreage and production forecasting and national agriculture drought assessment and monitoring system by Mahana Lobes National Crop Forecast Center. Biennial forest cover assessment by Forest Survey of India. Irrigation infrastructure assessment by Central Water Commission. Weather forecasting by Indian Meteorological Department. Integrated watershed management program and Mandrega by Ministry of Rural Development. Urban Geospatial Database Preparations for AMRU2 Cities by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs. Decentralized Planning by MOPR, Natural Resources Sensors and Disaster Management Support by Ministry of Home Affairs. Periodic Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation of Developmental Activities are also carried out using space technology applications. Communication Applications. ISTRO has implemented unique societal applications like Satellite instru intra Instructional Television Experiment, that is SIT, during 1970s. Kera Communication Project during 1980s. Trading and Development Communication Channel, TDCC. Jaboa Developmental Communication Project and Gramsat Programs during 1990s. Telemedicine, Teleeducation, Village Resources Center and Disaster Management Support Program during the 2000s. 
These programs were focused on addressing some of the specific problems of the common man by providing end-to-end -end solutions using space-based applications. Now, navigation application. Now, navigation application, or in short, NAVIC, is being utilized in various domains of civilian applications like automotive sector as part of vehicle location tracking device, power sector, power grid synchronization, fisheries sector, broadcasting disaster alerts and potential fishing, fishing zone information, consumer sector, location-based services on mobile handset platforms. The history and background for space application of various segments are as following you know, Earth observation applications. Space application activities started with detection of coconut root wilt disease in Kerala in 1970 using color infrared aerial photography from a helicopter. This was followed by many studies using aerial data and also data available from Landsat series of satellite from 1972. Around 60 end to end remote sensing application projects, joint experimental projects that is JEP consisting of aerial data acquisition coupled with ground truth data collection were carried out by ISTRO in collaboration with various users during mid 70s to early 80s which culminated in national symposium at Hyderabad in 1983 where the guidelines of future remote sensing programs were formulated. This led to formation of a unique institutional framework namely National Natural Resource Management System or NNRMS in 1985 under the aegis of erstwhile planning commission and with department of space as its nodal agency now national natural resource management consisting of all concerned government users departments helped in optimal integration of reports remote sensing inputs with conven conventional data towards efficient management of india's natural resources on a sustainable basis this paved way for Operational India Remote Sensing Satellite IRS program in 1988. Communication Applications Satellite Instructional Television Experiments, the project made available information television program to rural India. Kira Communication Project, a field laboratory development and local communication was conducted during 1975 and 1990 in Kira district of Gujarat. Jabua Developmental Communication Project. It was an effort towards definition of satellite-based communication system dedicated to meet the requirement of rural areas. Training and development communication channel. It provides one-way video and two-way audio system of interactive training and education. Gramsat. In Odisha, the Gramsat used for interactive training program for disseminating information and for building capacities of functionaries at districts, block and village level. Teleeducation, ISRO and Department of Space established teleeducation network in association with various states and central department institutions to reach the student community, particularly in remote rural areas. Telemedicine program of ISRO starting as one of the societal applications of space technology and with a vision to extend technological support to provide access to quality medical services to needy patients living in remote and inaccessible locations of the country. Village Resource Centre or the VRC, the VRC program aims to promote a single window delivery of need-based service in areas of agriculture, health, nutrition, water, weather, environment, non-formal education and alternate livelihoods to rural population. Disaster Management Support Program, the Disaster Management Support Program was implemented to provide space-based information and service to central and state government departments to strengthen the disaster management activities. Satellite Aided Search and Rescue Search and Rescue Program is implemented in collaboration with international agencies COSPAS SARSAT. It aids to search the ships, aircrafts and persons in distress and take rescue actions. Fishing Vessel Tracking System, a SATCOM-based terminal fitted in a fishing vessel, transmits its position, time and vessel identity information at fixed intervals. Such transmitted information is received by Central Hub and further accessed by concerned government agencies for tracking and safety of vessel and fishermen. NAVIC Alert Message Receiver for Fishermen Through this system, the fishermen are able to receive alerts on emergencies such as cyclone, high waves, tsunami, potential fishing zones and geofencing applications. Distress Alert Transmitter or DAT Now, DAT contains dedicated buttons for different types of emergencies such as fire, boat sinking, man overboard and medical including a test button. 
Navigation applications, the NVIC space segments consist of constellations of IR NSS satellites has been established and commissioned during time frame 2012 to 2016. NVIC ground segment has been established at various parts of NVIC coverage area and is operational since year 2012. To cater to NVIC applications, the user receivers are being developed as per the user requirement. Well, they saw a fairly elaborate reply by the ministry. Well, absolutely, Rajat. That was a very elaborate reply. And now, uh, joining us on the Quest Now show is Rajya Sabha MP Dr. Sasmit Patra. Let's see what he has to say on government's response to his query. <music> Dr. Patra, welcome to Rajya Sabha Television. So, you sought details on the status of space applications program in India, and the government has given a fairly voluminous reply. What is your take on government's response? I believe this is a reply that the government of India has given, which is very elaborate, which is very descriptive, and which provides a lot of facets about Space Application Centre. One thing that I did ask is, which is more from the academic point of view, was what is the background of the Space Application Centre? And considering the fact that I have a personal relationship, my father being part of these, uh, some of the projects like Jabua and SIT, Satellite Instructional Television Experiment that happened, it has always been a point of concern to see that how space applications can be harnessed and increased going forward. As we have seen that how space applications and space technology, India has been doing so well in terms of not only launching its own satellites, but also very recently being successfully launching commercial satellites for others. I think given that, the answer that has been given in terms of the applications, such as the Earth observation application, what it has been doing, communication applications, navigation, and especially communication applications is something which is extremely crucial. Uh, one thing I'd like to share with the viewers is uh, usually people think that Doordarshan was the television uh, uh, fl you know, flagship that actually brought it to India. It's not true. It was Indian Space Research Organization that actually brought television to India. And considering that, the communications application which has been given in this reply, which relates to, relates to the Khera project, satellite instructional television experiment, and the Jabua developmental communication project were actually the first projects in the 70s that was done by the government of India under the space applications based on which we had technology and therefore there came television. So if those projects had not taken place, then you would not have technology and television in the first place. And television by itself was initially in envisaged. At that time, you had Professor Yashpal who was actually coordinating this project and uh, Dr. Dhawan was then looking after the entire uh, process. And during that period of time, the reply that has been given by the government corroborates it and also provides a lot of facets to which has been taking place going forward, like the Gramset project, which was launched in 1999. It was primarily focusing to connect education in the panchayats with the points of learning in the universities and the schools, which has been remarkable. And of course, telemedicine, which is considered the mainstay in the COVID era. So I believe it is a very comprehensive answer covering all these facets and I'm sure it will be a great academic point of view also for people who want to do research or are doing research on space applications. So in the answer, it is clear that our space programs have been expanded rapidly and have also helped the uh, institution of various problems. How do you look at the global positioning of India's space applications programs? I think space technology in India has come up uh, really fast and this is one area that we should be very proud of. And the space applications relating to communication, uh, uh, whether it's geotagging, it is mapping, navigation, relating to even uh, uh, studies relating to the geographical distributions, the climatic changes. I think it, we have been doing substantially well. And I believe the Gramset pilot project of 1999 laid the foundation for a lot of academic activities to also happen. So today when we look at space applications, anything from the mobile phone you carry to the television DTH, to the very navigation system in your cars, to the television you see, everything is wired. So anything that is unwired is actually wired through space technology. So that is the unique place that space technology has come to possess in our lives. And going forward, as more and more hybrid forms of communication will happen, we talk about internet of things, etc. Everything is connected with satellites and satellite is space. So therefore, I believe India is poised to be a world leader in satellite technology, satellite deployment and communication. And I strongly believe that the government should continue the pursuit of satellite applications, space applications in a robust way. 
So any specific suggestion to the government for any specific space application? I believe COVID as a problem or rather as a challenge has come across to us. And I believe India with its I could say more uh, sustainable uh, and more feasible cost effective technology should be the front runner in terms of devising more applications that would connect and bridge the gaps that are there between person to person contact. Whether that is in terms of schools, colleges, hospitals, um, government functionaries, private organizations, everybody earlier used to have a one to one contact, a person to person contact. That has gone out because of COVID. Even in 2021, after the vaccine comes in and we try to get back to normalcy, this effect of hybrid kind of work from home as well as from office will need platforms, will need space applications, will need technology that will harness and bridge the gaps. And I believe those are the places, those are the fundamental areas linked with artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, internet of things that the government should be really looking to foster and take it forward. Well, on that note, thank you so much for joining us and sharing that perspective with us and joining us through this virtual platform. Thank you so much. Well, there you heard Dr. Saspit Patra speaking to my colleague Kriti Mishra. Now, Kriti, moving on to the next question that was asked by member Dinesh Trivedi from Ministry of Women and Child Development. Fairly important question. The member has asked about uh, the online complaints received in regard to child sexual abuse from March 2020 onwards and also what steps the government has taken so as to create awareness on the same. Well, the government has taken several steps to combat the menace of sexual abuse in the country, specifically child sexual abuse. And this response has been given by Women and Child Development Minister Smriti Irani. And this is a fairly elaborate response. And the government says, as reported by National Crime Records Bureau, the total number of child pornography, rape and gang rape complaints launched in National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal from 1st of March 2020 to 18th of September 2020 is 13,244. As reported by National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, information of 420 cases of child sexual abuse has been received by NCPCR from 1st of March 2020 till 31st of August 2020 via online portals, helpline and other media. As reported by Childline India Foundation, 3,941 calls have been received by CIF regarding sexual cases, child sexual cases from 1st of March 2020 to 15th of September 2020. The government further says that police and public order are state subjects as per the seventh schedule of the Constitution of India. Action in cases of child sex abuse is taken by concerned law enforcement agencies as per the extent provisions of law. The central government has taken several measures to fast track investigations in cases of child sexual abuse. These steps include mechanism for online reporting of child sex abuse cases, accessibility of reported incidents to concerned law enforcement agencies, improving cyber forensic facilities, training of law enforcement officers, judges, public prosecutors, spreading awareness, etc. The government implements a scheme for setting up of 1,023 fast-track special courts for expeditious trial and disposal of cases related to Rape and POXO Act. And there are 597 FTSCs, which are fast track special courts, functional out of which 321 are exclusively POXO courts. Section 43 of the POXO Act provides that the central government and every state government shall take all measures to give wide publicity to the provisions of the Act. In accordance with this, the government has taken various steps from time to time to create awareness of the provisions of the POXO Act through electronic and print media consultations workshops and training programs with stakeholders concerned. Various other steps taken include sending messages through telecom service providers, messages through government's Twitter handle at CyberDost, conducting cyber awareness programs in different cities, radio sports, jingles on FM radio, publishing of handbook or adolescents or students and introduction of a chapter on cyber security in CBSC syllabus as well. National Commission for Protection of Child Rights, which is NCPCR, and State Commission for Protection of Child Rights, which are SCPCRs, are also mandated to monitor the implementation of the POXO Act. And they have developed and circulated information, education, and communication material on POXO Act 
and that is also available on the website which is www.ncpcr.gov.in. And now let's move on to the next question asked by member T.G. Venkatesh and this question is to the Ministry of Textiles. And the member has asked whether the government has introduced Make in India initiative for the weaving community and the kind of SOPs or concessions given to the weavers in the country. But before we go to the elaborate reply by the Ministry, let's tell you about Make in India. Make in India is an initiative uh, by the government where it aims to have a large domestic manufacturing market at the same time creation of employment opportunities with the same. The Ministry in the reply says that textile is an inherent part of Make in India initiative. In the reply, the Minister of Textiles, Smriti Irani, says that Government of India has announced a special economic package, Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan, for boasting economy of the country and making India self-reliant. Relief and credit support measures have been announced for various sectors, including MSMEs. The weavers and artisans, cargoers, can avail benefits of these relief and credit support measures to receive their business. Now, apart from above special economic package, the Ministry of Textiles has also been taking following initiatives for benefit of handloom weavers and artisans across the country. To support handloom and handicraft sectors and to enable wider market for handloom weavers, artisans, producers, steps have been taken to onboard weavers, artisans on government e-market place to enable them to have to sell their products directly to various government departments and organizations. To promote e-marketing of handloom products, a policy framework was designed and under which any willing e-commerce platform with good track record can participate in online marketing of handloom products. Accordingly, 23 e-commerce initiatives has been engaged for the online marketing handloom products. A social media campaign, hashtag Vocal for Handloom, was launched on 6th National Handloom Day by the government in partnership with all stakeholders to promote the handloom legacy of India and to ensure people's support for weaving community. Well, it's important to emphasize here that these social media campaigns by the ministry has actually increased awareness about the textiles and handlooms and created some sort of uh, enthusiasm among the buyers and e-commerce firm mentioned that they registered sale of handlooms and textiles on their platforms besides the conventional sales. In the face of unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic, it's not feasible to hold conventional marketing events such as exhibitions, melas, to deal with this crisis, the government endeavours to provide online marketing opportunities to our weavers and handloom producers. Taking a step towards realising Atmanirbhar Bharat, Handloom Export Promotion Council has endeavoured to virtually connect handloom weavers and exporters from different corners of country with the international market. With more than 200 participants from different regions of the country showcasing products with unique design and skills, the Indian Textile Sourcing Fair was organised on 7th, 10th and 11th of August 2020. The show has attracted considerable attention of international buyers. Design resources centers are being set up in Weaver Services Centers through NIFT with objective to build and create design-oriented excellence in handloom sector and to facilitate weavers, exporters, manufacturers and designers for creating new designs. To enable the handloom agencies and weavers to withstand their profession, the Ministry of Textile has, is implementing uh, several schemes through the Office of Development Commissioner for handlooms across the country. Now, these schemes include National Handloom Development Program, Comprehensive Handloom Cluster Development Scheme, Handloom Weavers Comprehensive Welfare Scheme, Yarn Supply Scheme. Under the above schemes, financial assistance is provided for raw materials, purchase of looms and accessories, design innovation, product di diversification, infrastructure development, skill upgradation, lighting units, marketing of handloom products and loan at concessional rates. And now let's move on to the last question of this edition of the question hour which is from member Vivek Tankha and this question is to Prime Minister's office. And the member has sought details about the measures taken by the government for smooth process of filing RTIs through online means during the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, RTI or Right to Information is an exemplary tool of information that can be exercised by the citizen of this country to get information from the government or any agency that comes under the government. Well, the reply given by Minister of State for Prime Minister's Office, Dr. Jitendra Singh, 
Uh, the minister says that RTI online portal has already been put in place by Department of Personal and in Training since August 2013 to help citizens in filing RTI applications. First and second appeals with public authorities aligned there. Further, the Central Information Commission has in place the facility of audio and video hearing even before the COVID-19 pandemic and all the second appeals or complaints cases outside Delhi have been adjudicated through NIC studios at various district headquarters in various states as suitable for appellants and respondents. Now, during COVID-19 pandemic, the Central Information Commission had taken steps to facilitate hearing or second appeals complaints through audio and video facilities by intensive use of technology. Now, as far as Central Information Commission is concerned, a total number of 4,491 online requests have been processed since March 2020 to 17th of September 2020. So, Rajat, those were the questions and answers in this edition of the Question Hour show. Well, thanks, Kriti, and thanks to our viewers for watching this edition of Question Hour. You can catch all our programs, including Question Hour, on the online platform of YouTube. And also follow our Twitter handle to catch the latest on RSTV and all the programs of Rajasabha Television. Stay tuned to Rajasabha Television. Take care and stay safe.